What is going on everybody? Jumbo Thick here, back with more Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. This is Rise of the Forsaken, our Warhammer Fantasy 4th Edition Roleplaying Campaign. I have, um, I am, of course, Jumbo Thick, your GM, your DM for the night, and I am joined by the entire Ford Unfortunate Fellowship, Mr. Doobie 209, Jumbo Smooth, and Pierce Galactic. Um, surely by now, Everyone uh, knows who is who, but just in case we've got somebody peeking in for the first time, um, brief description uh, from you guys and your character, and we will head on in because we've got a lot of ground to cover tonight. Hello, everyone. I am Jumbo Smooth. I'm playing the role of Marius Wolf this evening. Um, if you're just catching up, brief description. Uh, he's a, a handsome, stocky lad. Um, pit fighter champion uh <laughs> currently um he's a good guy though you know he he, he likes to to help people if he can and uh he, he is he's he's married and has a uh a child named priscilla uh, yeah mm -hmm. that's uh marius wolf <laughs> what's going on everybody db209 here and i play seamus mcgreedy the now bounty hunter general the Ooh. tall boy of the party. Tall boy. Standing in at six foot one. Mm -hmm. uh, unknown age. Officially listed as 24, but uh, probably older than that. And uh, a native of Sealburg. Welcome, friends. This is Pierce Galactic. I will be playing uh, Raglin Bonneau. Raglin the Bold. So many names, but... I think uh, we're gonna go with Bano. It's, uh, it's what we've been we've been holding on to, and uh, it's easy to remember. I am a man of immense stature, five three, uh, <laughs> an artist, once a nobleman, a man of many places, many many tongues, and uh, well, we'll leave it at that. And just uh, many many friends, some that uh, his companions are not the most fond of. And uh, many broken promises, but perhaps we can uh, make some amends, too, with our actions. Perhaps, indeed. And last we left off, the Fellowship had found themselves back in Sealburg after their long, long um, vacation? Um, quest, maybe? In Bretonia. Where many, many terrible and horrible things happened to Bragadine's family and revelations were made. Upon their return, they did a bit of settling down and continued on with their lives. Marius attempted to undermine Mr. Gold, um, while Bragadine formed a mercenary company. And Seamus decided to uh, put a scope on his rifle. Um, besides all that, though, the three of them have been involved in a bit of an ordeal after the slaughtering and burning of the Road Wardens led by Velkin, Velkin's Raiders, by the Fellowship, or at least seemingly by the Fellowship. They were apprehended, apprehended, I can talk today, and brought in to Sealburg under the guise of a certain witch hunter from Seamus's past. A witch hunter that goes by the name Cole, who had in his company Mr. Catch, as well as a rather brooding and dark plated figure, as we have now come to know as Colemouth. A Dawizar of some ill repute, Ill repute that um, may or may not have a oath sworn against him by one Marius Wolf. They were brought into town and were going to be burned at the stake had not Governor Freeze interceded in their judgment as he demanded evidence be brought um, to him. For him to allow this to happen. Not that he had much to stand on. But regardless of how all of this transpired. The three of them were taken. 
by this witch hunter. And they were kept inside the Temple of Sigmar, which appeared to be broken down and in a dilapidated state from years of disuse, despite being seemingly taken care of by Father Huss, a very zealous Sigmarite war priest that um, has been causing all kinds of shenanigans around Sealburg for years. The three were tortured um, one after another. However, in so doing, this gave an opportunity for Seamus to escape, as well as Marius and Bragadine to also escape there shortly after. But before they did, Marius discovered that Father Lichter, the Sigmarite priest from oh so long ago, thought to have been killed or died at some point many many years ago was in fact alive and being kept in a room under lock and key after having liberated him he revealed that father huss was something else and then he passed away from his injuries shortly thereafter the three of you at some point were all pursued by these fanatics, these crazed followers of this witch hunter, as well as some of them were even followers of uh, Father Huss as well. After making a stand at the barracks of the Bold Bastards, Bragadine's mercenary company, where Marius Wolf slaughtered <laughs> at least a dozen men with his bare hands, Everybody, dude. He slaughtered it was, everybody. It was impressive. Um, the three of you recommuned and got back together after being split up all over Sealburg for quite some time. You did manage to take with you two of the um, two of Bragadine's mercenaries as well as Bragadine's second in command, Jacques. Whom was heavily wounded at the time. Seeing as you are all wanted men, you decided to hide out. And the nearest hideout, as Bragadine led you to, was that of Golden Tonics, one of the many fronts for Mr. Gold himself. You laid low inside and even liberated some interesting, uh, let's just call them um, enhancements from the shop itself. Having come to a decision of what you were thinking you were going to be doing, a unexpected visitor made their presence known. Having Mr. Bonneau seemingly just let this woman inside and treat her with extreme deference and almost subservience to the owner of the Silk Canary. After a series of good checks, I'll call it that, it was discovered by Marius Wolf that this woman, or if you can call her a woman, Miss Nicolette Montague was in fact a woman of the night in more ways than one, as she was most certainly undead and possibly vampiric in nature. As she had a rather imposing amount of will and fear that she almost supernaturally imposed upon the three of you. However, she was apparently not here to kill you, as she imparted some information. Of course, she did, um, while not threaten any of, any of you, did show that she did have some measure of control over Mr. Bonneau. 
And she did request an audience with Mr. McCready whenever you got back from wherever you're going. And that, my friends, is where we have left off. Well, not not so much. As you did decide to go after Mr. Gold, um, or not necessarily go after Mr. Gold, but meet with him at Bragadine's house. Um, Three Fingers was supposed to be there as well as who knows who else. Um, You were told to just meet there, that many people were going to be there. And when you entered through the door, you found that the place was destroyed. The bed was flipped over. And after it being removed from its normal spot, you saw a hole leading down into the deep, to the depths of Seelberg, more than likely into the sewers. And the smell of rat and the underfolk was present. Seamus had reached down and grabbed a hold of an eye patch, a very familiar eye patch, one that belongs to Three Fingers, the bandit. And that is where we are picking up. So, so Seamus, you've just picked it up and looked at it. Yeah. I'll give a look to Marius as I hold it, looking at the eye patch, and I'll look down to the hole. Mm. Dig many holes in your house, Bragadine? Well, not not on purpose, but uh, it, uh, it is not always the best neighborhood. Uh, we have, uh, I will say, I've had a, a rat problem in the past. Mm. Well, why don't you go down there and take a look? It was little Tim. Toby? Little. Oh, oh, oh my, uh, my assistant, You're, Theodore? Uh, the, the boy he yes. was? The, his, the boy. Yes, the boy, the boy uh, Theodore. Theodore, my apprentice, yeah. Yes, yes. So, right before um, we just had all the technical <clears throat> difficulties, Seamus just told Bracketing <laughs> to go down in the hole and take a look. Uh, oh, Seamus, why, uh, it's so dark down there. Um, perhaps, uh, perhaps you should lead the way. Hmm. Your house, Bragadine, but as you only have one eye, maybe I should go down there first if you can't see shit. Hmm. And it is dark, like dark, dark. Um, the absence of light. Hmm. Yeah, I'd probably like to try to find, like, um, a pseudo torch if I can't find like a regular torch. Um, Some type of light source. Interesting enough, you from the little bit of light that's shining down in, because you you can see the ground beneath. There's about it looks oh, to okay. be about a twelve foot drop straight down. Um, but you do see lying at the bottom. Um, you see some equipment that's just kind of laid out. And you do see a bundle of what looks like might be torches just laying at the bottom in the dirt. Um, I'll find like an item that I can drop down there just to make sure, you know, it's not booby trapped. Okay, easily enough. You mm-hmm. grab a hold of one of uh, the, uh, one of the uh, copies of the Adventures of Braggadine the Bold um, laying mm-hmm. just wait, at wait, your wait, feet. Hey, not that. Uh, the one next to mm-hmm. Down it goes. Toss it in. <laughs> Doesn't appear to be trapped. All right. It is I'll a 12 foot drop. <laughs> um, I'll, with the eye patch in my hands, I'll look to the other two, and I'll start to kind of shimmy my way down. Okay. Um, does any, are you going to use a rope, or are you just going to drop down? Um, I'll probably like get to where I can... Get down a hole, like still hanging onto the ledge, and then mm-hmm. just let go. Okay. If it's only twelve, if it's only 12 yeah, no, feet. it's only twelve feet for you. Being as tall as you are, this is it, it's not going to be bad. You know, it's not it's not that bad of a drop. So you just kind <clears> of <throat> hit hit low. Um, it is extremely dark. Um, you just a little bit of light coming from up ahead is all you have illuminating your surroundings. Once you're down here. And you can tell that you're definitely um, in something that looks like it was worked. Um, 
oddly enough, Seamus, it reminds you of the tunnel that leads to the chamber of the old ones up in the mountains. Almost mm. as if it might have been, I don't know, chiseled by the same teeth and claws. It's very odd. Um, it smells like uh, rat man down here very, very strongly. But there is a bundle at your feet, and it looks like torches. And in fact, next to it, you see some food supplies, and you see a couple other things that might have been used for um, exploration that are just laying here in kind of a haphazard um, array, as if they were being collected for something and then were left. Mm. Well, I will attempt to light a torch while the other two do their thing, go okay. through some of that stuff. Yeah, you easily enough are able to light one. Um, back upstairs, um, what is Marius doing in this moment? Um, Bergen, does Stido live here? Uh, Theodore should be here at this moment. He... Uh... I have a, a pile of straw for him to, to, to sleep upon. I am I am <laughs> generous, but uh, I have not seen him. Uh, I looked around a little bit, but I no 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 high no hair. I believe that is a saying you have here in the empire of him. And no, he is not Marius present. Probably start looking. Okay, Marius is start looking concerned. We came in. We could tell there were signs of uh, a struggle. Right? Yes, like the, it's very obvious yeah. that something happened in this room. You don't see any blood or anything like that. Uh, and, she and Seamus made a decent investigation check um, before he dropped down early at the end of last session. And it, there's no blood or anything, but the, it does look like there was a struggle in here. Um. Is there any, like, armor left over by the deceased uh, men-at-arms? Um, you can, you can go, past? yeah, you, you can go over to where they were. And, mm -hmm. um, you know what? Let's, 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 let's play a little, a little game here. A little luck roll. <laughs> a luck roll? Yeah, a little luck roll. Is. And by the luck roll, I mean, go ahead and give me an intuition test. <sighs> And intuition. yeah, depending on your success levels will depend on what you find. Oh, uh, I got a 40 out of 47. Okay. All right. So with just a success, not even a level of success, you go over to kind of the, it's mostly a bedroom that has the equivalent of bunk beds in it from where Bragadine has allowed some of his men to stay with him. And you find inside, you, you see that there is a sword that someone left behind. Um, there, it yeah, uh, it's probably nothing that Marius wants anyway. You just kind of toss it to the side. Oh, Marius, would you hand that to Jacques, please? He will, he will need it. <sighs> yes, Marius, I'm I, af afraid that uh, I must have left mine behind in the... Uh, the fight before i'll take that and he he'll reach out and take it from you um and a matter of fact the other men at arms are coming in here as well to try to outfit what they can um unfortunately there's not much you do find a breastplate i got one of those but there um, you find a breastplate inside of here and you would also find a um the equivalent uh, of like uh plate gauntlets I'll put those on. Okay. Uh, All right. Strap those on. Um, now, as I'm walking back down to the hole, I get ready to go down. Uh, I'm going to kind of talk to Jacques and just be like, I'm sure you should be heading down with us, Jacques. Perhaps you should stay here. I, I uh, cannot argue with you, Marius, but... Uh... If what I think has happened here, you, you, you may need all the, all the manpower you can muster. Bragadine, what do, what do you say? Jacques, I, uh, if you, Jacques, I must be honest, you are, 
There are so few of my countrymen, so few of the people I grew up with left. But if you are, again, you, if you remember, I, I, I said I would release you from your bonds. If you, if you feel you must rest, there will be no, no dishonor to you for, for you to stay behind and, and watch my house. But I must be honest. Bagadine reaches out and kind of clasps his wrist and like that bro clasp where you're mm-hmm. grabbing each other's mm-hmm. forearm. Jacques, I, I must be honest that with you by my side, I know that your challenge would be too great. Here, let me let me give you something to uh, help you feel a little bit better. And uh, Raganin will reach into his uh, little pouch mm-hmm. and uh, grab a jar out that he picked up and uh, open the, the lid up and kind of scoop a little white powder on it. <laughs> it's a, it's a okay. Have a, here, I know it's unusual, but I want you to, it is, it's like snuff. I know you are not the noble, so you are not, you, you have never tried snuff, but here, sniff it like you, like a, you would see a noble sniff snuff. Here. I, and give uh, him a little bit of that, uh, that Tilly and marching powder. Oh, yeah. He, uh, he, he sees it, and one of the men with him immediately, like, you could see, like, a bead of sweat kind of rolled down the side of his head. <laughs> one of the, one of the other guys, he's kind of looking at it. And um, Jacques looks over at them. Uh, Bregadine, I, I, I know what this is. I, I, I do not partake. Um, I, I'd rather not. That is not the problem, Jacques. Um, so Vane, I uh, happen to notice that you, your eyes got a little wide. You are. Uh, do you he's, need some courage over there? He's over there licking his lips. He's starting to itch his nose a little bit, and he. Oh, uh, here, Sylvain. I will. I will let you. I. I don't know how to clean this off my finger. Here, take oh, this, please. He, he comes up and. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh wow! And he takes it like a champ. He. Uh, oh. He's kind of. <sighs> this uh. This sounds dirty. It does. You, you, <laughs> it does you, indeed. You look, you look like a knight of the grail. Now jump down there and, <sighs> and uh, grab a torch for us. He kind of, he starts, he's kind of, you see him kind of pumping himself up and he just like full throttle just jumps down the hole all 12 feet. Oh shit. <laughs> just boom. Right. He hits the bottom. Let's see. Crunch. Damn, dude. He hits the bottom. I mean, just like, uh, like an Olympic athlete. <laughs> Parkour, braces Andy, himself parkour. and he's standing and one of the men at arms is standing next to you, Seamus. The fuck? <sighs> he's for the lady! And he's, he looks like he <laughs> is um, really amped up right now. And as he says that, his voice echoes down mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. tunnel um, oh, that has been <laughs> that has been um... Uh, burrowed into Bragadine's household. Uh, I saw the lady down there go run after her. You did? And he immediately starts running down the tunnel. Cool. Good reading. So, um, back up top did while this is torch? happening, <laughs> um, what are... Did he grab a torch like he was told to? He did not. He did not grab a torch. He's just going. Oh, I'll just cross him off. Um... <laughs> Chuck, are you, uh, oh, so Mar- Maris is going to start to climb down. The okay. Hole. Easily done. No check needed, especially since you can climb. <laughs> so yeah, easily make your <laughs> way down there. What were you saying? Bracketing? Uh, Nathaniel, please go make sure the door is locked. I don't know if it matters now, but I would prefer it to be locked behind us. And, uh, Jacques, uh, yes. And he again, my again, my friend. You, you may be excused, but are you coming with me? May I count on you, or do you, or are you staying behind to guard the house? I. Uh, and he, he's he's pretty heavily wounded. Um, I don't. Jacques, uh, I, you know I, what? I don't know how much I can. I I feel I could I could swing the sword, but I I don't know much what much else I could do for you. 
but um, no, you know what? I I need you to. I do need you to stay behind. I am concerned that we may we may be falling into a trap, and someone will come behind us. I need you to stand guard up here, please. Will you? I beg you, Jacques. Will you please? Of course. Yes. Stay behind. Of of course, Brigadine. But I, I have a feeling that uh, I am not a wanted man. I will see what I can do up here while you are down below. Perhaps I can find some kind of uh, uh, re reinforcements. I will go and um, is there anyone I should approach? Anyone I should go, go and form? Hmm. Is there anyone he should approach or go and form? Can you I tell, you tell, that? you tell me. You're the only one up here. Seamus okay. and Marius are down in the hole. Uh, he can tell the Stragani. He could Bro, if they were still on. alive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he's really hating that. <sighs> so, yes, he's I want you to uh, go to the faggy and let uh, Thormir know the, uh, the situation. Is, the, the, the bar. Yes, the... Yes. Uh, the great dwarf there, he is the one, you, you you know who I'm talking about, he is the one with the, he is, the, the yeah. ale of such power. Everyone knows uh, Thordum, yes. Yes, Thordum, I, I, I don't know why I said Thordum, so, but uh, let them know that the three of us, or all of us have gone with, uh, with Marius and Seamus, that down in the tunnels underneath. Let oh. them know where we are. Okay. Perhaps I... he, he can help us. Yes, I will. Uh, I will do this, and then I will. I will return and make sure nothing else comes down. Um, also, after you do that, swing by the Silken Canary I, and course. tell Lady Montague. Just let her know what just happened. That um, there is a he looks. The he looks extremely pale when you mention the Canary and Lady Montague. Mm -hmm. And I need you to give me a a, a severe success, several successes on a charm roll here. Okay. If you want him to do this, if you really want him to, uh, I want him to do it because okay. we got seven levels of success. Okay. All right. And he, you see him pale, um, but. He nods his head. I will, and he's very shaky. I will, I will do this. Just, Brigadine, if you, if you make it back, and I'm not here, you need to burn that place to the ground. Um. Okay, Jacques. We will. I will remember that. I will remember that. Thank you. <sighs> now be be safe. May the lady, lady bless you, Parkadine. And he grasps you by the shoulder. It has been an honor. Good luck. And he makes his way out the door. All right. Nathaniel, please, help me down. I am, uh, it, I, I need some assistance. It's, 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 a, it's a bit of a long drop. So of course. I am going into the hole, and hopefully yeah. that my last yeah. men at arms is gonna. Yeah, to, gonna help he'll help down. you down. No check needed. You you easily okay. get down. Um, all of you are now present. The your other men at arms makes it down as well. Okay. Um, however, you are missing one as he just took off down the uh, the hole as he mm -hmm. was hopped up on that some so uh, some Colombian yep. marching powder. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So um, now that we're all in the hole. Um, you see the the similar tunnel. The, it's wide right here, but you can see that it narrows shortly ahead. And it only goes one way. There's nowhere else to go. There's no other little offshoots. Um, it looks like you could probably only walk um, single file. And Seamus would probably have to hunch because it's not very tall. Seamus, Marius, I... Uh... I ask you to uh, allow me to lead. 
I will ask Nathan to stand behind me with the torch so that I may see, but I, uh, I do believe I, I have my, these Bretonian ears of mine, they, they tend to be quite well. And also I, I have a, a shield that may also protect me if something happens, happens in, upon us, but I, I feel like I owe it to you to, to lead us in this situation. Do you mind? What could go wrong? The blind leading the deaf. If you want to, if you want to go oh, first, okay. have at it. Uh, Raggedy looks at Marius with a with a pleading look, knowing that he and Marius are not in the greatest terms right now. Mm-hmm. You're asking to lead. Yeah, yeah. to take the lead. Uh, and you have a torch. Uh, my you you can Arcane easily be get right one. behind me with the torch. Yeah. Okay. Um, Marius will just nod. All right. Um, yep. All right. Um, a a torch is struck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, are there any any like tracks or anything? You you do see numerous tracks actually. Um, mostly, and I, you won't even need a check for this because there's so many. They they look like humanoid, but they don't look like people feet, if that makes any sense. Um, you do see, of course, fresh tracks from the men-at-arms that just... Um, <laughs> that just... <laughs> that just ran down the hallway. Yeah. Um, but other than that, you basically see the equivalent of rat people tracks back and forth. Well, shameless little slides at the back of this this marching order. Okay. So the marching order is... Well, before we... I just just want to get this straight. So we got Bragadine. Then we have your men at arms. Mm -hmm. Then Marius, then Seamus. Is that correct? Probably. Sounds right to me. I assume we're in order of shortest to tallest. Uh, pretty much. Yeah. It's a kind of uh, close, close. Yeah. Um, the your men at arms has a has a halberd, so he's having a like. It's it's awkward as hell. He he's having a like, almost like a spear. Hold it low and 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 okay. walk behind you. But he's also got a torch in one hand, so it's it's awkward. But he's managing so far. Okay. Um, the tunnel only goes for about 200 feet and you're going at a, a diagonal downwards. It's not very steep, but, um, you can, you can definitely tell that you're going down and it feels kind of warm down here. And the smell is, is horrible. It smells like wet rat. But then there is a much more awful smell that um, floods your senses, Bragadine. And I'm going to need everybody present, including your men at arms, to give me an endurance check. Crushed it. All right. What'd you get? Uh, Seamus got a two. Oh yeah, Seamus is good. Damn. Oh wow. Uh, Marius got a thirty-eight out of sixty-five. Okay. All right, that is enough. How about Bragadine? Fifty out of fifty-four. Okay, Bragadine. You. Let's see. For your man at arms, he did not do very well. Um, you and your man at arms being up towards the front, you get more of a more of a, a big whiff before a you dry manage. Knee there. Yeah, before you, you manage to cover your face completely. And it smells like shit because it is shit. As you stumble out of this tunnel, you are now in the sewers beneath Sealberg. There is actually a fully functional sewer system down here that um, Seamus and Marius would be familiar with. Marius more so um, from times in the... Uh, in the mine um, because some of the work actually patched into the sewers at one point, but 
You are smelling the feces and excrement of the people of Sealburg as Marius knows, as you kind of come out to this main tunnel system, there are essentially catwalks on each side. And in the center, there is a, a very slow moving um, stagnant pool that uh, the locals refer to as the stew. And it is such a horrendous smell that, Bragadine, you have the equivalent of one blinded condition. Currently, your men at arms has three blinded conditions. Um, from the sheer backlash of the smell and the fumes coming off of the stew. as you prevent yourself from falling into, uh, into the excrement and you brace yourselves against the catwalk. The catwalks are only wide enough for single file. Um, same as the tunnel you just came out of. Though this, this sewage passageway itself looks like if... It was completely flat. You would be uh, if there was no no um, sewage river <laughs> in the center. It looks like it would be about um, twenty feet wide. So you would have plenty of room to for many people to to maneuver. But currently you're on like a catwalking system. Um, it looks like there's been several boards placed to to mark places that have fallen into disrepair and allow allow you to um, cover the distance where the stone catwalk ends and this makeshift plank system has been put into place to continue forward. As you enter into this part of the tunnel, it branches left and right. So a decision will need to be made which direction you are moving. Now we'll get uh, to all of you. Can I make a tracking check? You can. Were you wanting to do something, Bragany? Uh, I want to do an audio perception check to see if I can hear anything. Okay. That's the direction that I might hear something. Yeah, go ahead and give me one of those. You will be at a minus 10 because of your... I know that it, I'm referring to it as blinded because there's not a condition for what I want to give you. And so that's it, that's the equivalent to what it's going to be. I am imagine he's still dry heaving or trying to control it, so yeah. Yeah. We're going to use a fortune point. That was a 92. Hmm. Ooh, 11. Okay. And um, Seamus, what did you get for your tracking? A 32 out of 56. 32 out of 56. So here's what happens. Um, first off, um, Seamus. As all of you get down to the to the bottom here, it is it's really tight, and you guys kind of have to kind of some of you you're kind of in the tunnel a little bit still, like your head poked out. And Seamus, you notice that there are signs along the left side. It looks like about fifty feet to your left, down the uh, the left side of the uh, the tunnel. There is another plank that actually goes across to the other side of the um, across the the stew to the other side of the catwalk on the opposite side of the tunnel that looks like it may have recently um, had some traffic across it because you see even in the low light from the torches you can tell that there are. It looks like wet footprints, as if maybe something or someone had gotten wet and crawled out of it and ran across said um, piece of wood. Probably somebody may or may not have come out of the stew itself. That might be a little concerning. Um, because with that check, you could tell that there is a large splotch where the stone part of the catwalk is still wet and damp. And you you can see that there is still remnants of 
pooled water as if something was dripping wet and pooled right there and then ran across that catwalk. Um, so you see that. You see that direction. Bragadine, with your critical success hearing, you hear um, movement coming from that direction. You, you cannot see that far at all. But you not only do you just hear movement, but you hear um, you would hear very, very faintly and distantly. You're not even sure how far away it must be echoing down the sewage tunnels. But you do hear the telltale reverberation of metal on metal as if something or someone was fighting somewhere in the sewer. But it's so distant that nobody else would be able to hear it. And you are probably questioning if you heard it um, to begin with, because you only hear it once. But I, I can tell what direction though, right? Yes, and it's the same direction that Seamus is pointing out where the um, where the tracks are leading. Seamus, did you, did you hear that? It was just for a moment, but I thought I heard a swords clashing or, or something similar. And I, I point in the direction. I'm sure it's just pitch darkness, but I'm pointing in that direction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, here is the sound of shit below our feet. <laughs> I do think we need to go this way. Oh yes, I uh I have a guess that this is the right way. I uh at least I I know I heard something. It was it was it was quick. But by the lady, I, I, I know this must be the right way. Okay. Marius, are you doing anything in this moment? Uh, I mean, not necessarily a check. Marius is kind of, I guess, watching these two be tracking stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, kind of keeping an eye on things around himself, but that's about it. Okay. All right. Um, Marius, as, um, yeah, Marius, Mar- go Mar- ahead and Mar- give me a perception Mar- test real quick. Okay. As we, if we start walking, I'll probably point out to Marius that, you know, something came out of the stew. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, I got a 24 out of... 57. Okay. All right. I will keep that in mind as we are moving forward. Okay. Yeah. Marius is trying to keep a little bit quiet. Yeah. So. And Marius, one thing you would notice for sure is that the man at arms, the Bragadine, like his eyes are watering and like he's, he's holding a torch and his weapon. And so he's like trying to wipe his face on his shoulder most of the time, but he does not look like he's in good shape right now. Um, <laughs> just so you, you would be able to tell out of everyone here. No one else apparently is that concerned, but um, he, yeah. he's not looking good. Um, you have a feeling that he's having some kind of adverse reaction to, uh, to the smell and the fumes coming off of the sewage. Um, Marius will grab the torch from him. And, uh... Thank you. Thank you, my Lord. And he begins wiping his face as vehemently, um, holding his weapon. Are you, are you, are you right? I, uh, yes, no. I don't. Uh, it's I've never been down here. I've I've heard stories, but uh, thank you. I just I it was I was afraid I would drop that at any moment. And um, Marius. Um, you have lots of experience underground and things like that. Um, you would know that if you were to drop a burning torch in the sewage, um, that there has been known to have pockets of natural gas that comes bubbling up guess. out of the sewage. Yeah. And you may or may not, um, it, it could happen. It might not happen, but you might yeah. make an explosion. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. just, just FYI. <laughs> Um, let's, let's get on, move on. Um, 
I'm feeling your friend is up there. Um, apparently he fell in the stew and it didn't deter him. I, uh, he's, he, uh, well, he, he always has been a hard man with the, uh, whenever he gets a hold of the, well, well, you, you, you saw, and, um, Braggadine, are you Nathaniel, still waiting? What do, yes, but I'm sure I can actually hear them. Oh, yes. What, what, uh, Nathaniel, I, it is very dark up here, would you, can you take the torch back, or, uh. Uh, I need to give you a, a handkerchief. I, uh, I, I, I'm having a hard time seeing, uh, sir, I, um, I and he's just wiping his face. I will follow you, let's move. Yeah. Yeah. Marius is like, I will follow you, Bragadine, let's move. Yeah. And Marius, okay. do, do you move up behind Bragadine? Uh, either that or I'll be in front. Okay. It would, uh, you, you, you tell me, who, who's leading still? Uh, Braggadine is willing to leave, though. Um, Marius will probably walk up front with the torch. Okay, he can yeah, see he... in the he can see in the dark. Yes, yes. So Marius, you kind of push up past um past Braggadine, and you know shoulder check him into the stew on your way. No, past. I was going to ask. <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> <laughs> is he like, move out of the way? Is he like, excuse me, Braggadine, or is it like, kind of like, uh, still remember you work for Mr. Gold there? Um, uh, Marius, Marius isn't like checking him, but he's just like moving past him. Yeah, yeah. he just moves okay. past him um, with the torch, and the rest of you follow suit um, behind him. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Marius. With Seamus pointed out everything, so you're able to to see it. And I mean, you're more familiar with tunnel work than most. And these are these are dwarven built, so they're very finely built. Though they have fallen into grave disrepair, um, mostly due to the fact that apparently the uh, the foul rat men have been down here for a long time, unhindered. But regardless of all that, um, you follow this trail essentially. Um, basically of not only stench, but at some point, um, I'm going to need, well, with your perception test, you would be good. Seamus, can I get you to make one more tracking check? Uh, is Nathaniel in front of me now? Yes, he would be in front of you, unless you don't want him to be. Do you want him behind you? No, that's fine. I was okay. gonna, gonna, I was gonna chat him up. Um, the tracking is a 43 out of 56. Okay, that is good enough. Um, after, and you guys are down here for probably another hour or two, and it's it's quiet. It's very quiet, and it smells horrible, and it's really, really dark. Um, you guys are used to being in hazardous kind of situations, um, and apparently so is the man-at-arms, despite his... Uh, current predicament with the uh, the fumes but um, nobody is going to need to make any checks to see if they lose their shit down here which is fine but you can tell that this place is a maze and if anybody except for marius and maybe seamus with his tracking capabilities would be lost down here um it's uh, a lot of tunnels end up dead ending and due to your tracking check, you do manage to stay on course and it becomes easier to stay on course Marius because you eventually start seeing blood. It looks somewhat fresh, not like recently spilled, but you see human blood and you see a more dark foul smelling blood as well that you know to be of the uh, Ratman ilk. So there is Skaven blood spilled on these catwalks as well. And you still the catwalk and the stew still kind of like in between us? And yes. The other catwalk? Yes. Okay. That is still how it is. And Marius, with your previous successes, after a little while, you begin to notice that it, it's odd, but there appears to be a set of bubbles 
in the stew that have been kind of following out of your peripheral vision every turn that you've made almost as if there's something in there um how far away from me can i tell oh that a couple of feet <laughs> like, like okay in this in the stew okay it's in it yes um, um Maris is going to uh, kind of continue walking and then um, he's going to stop, turn around, and say, Seamus, shoot the bubbles! And um, just point at the the bubbles in the stew. Okay. Um, yeah, and then he's... I have my, my torch and my knuck ready, All ready right. to go. <laughs> Seamus, what do you do? Uh, if, I, if Nathaniel's in the way, I kind of like push him out of the way okay yeah just, and know, he he's like blind off. practically with with what's what's happened to him so you just kind of nudge him out of the way and he kind of oh stumbles to the side um you let um, loose a bolt it's a 14 out of 56 okay how much damage is that it's four plus nine 13 13 Team. Um, and it impales if it matters. Yeah, how many success yeah. levels is that though? I want I I need to know that as well. Uh, let's see. Four success levels. Four. Okay, that's good because since it, since the creature is concealed, um, you have to you have a minus twenty to the shot, but mm -hmm. so yes, you still did you you did you did fine. So. Um, you, and this is with the crossbow, correct? Yep. Okay. The bolt streaks into the stew and Seamus, it doesn't pass very far into the surface. You see, you, you see the bolt begin and then it sticks right at the surface. And as it does, you hear this ridiculously loud screech <gasps> and a creature lurches up out of the sewage oh, that bashes its head on the ceiling it's moving so quickly and so it's tall is it's it, freakishly it, it, tall like it's been okay. hunched down in the stew itself and it is a mass of, it looks like bubos and flesh. And it is crawling with slithery things across its body. And it's almost maddening to look at. Um, this is something unnatural. This is something unholy. And I need everyone to roll me initiative. Oh, are we still on the no. catwalk? Yes, you are still on the catwalk. <laughs> Uh, Seamus got a 13. Okay. 13 for Seamus. Braggadine got a 13. Okay. All right. Harry sold a 9. Seamus. All right. Let me make sure real quick. Who has the higher agility? Seamus does. Okay. Braggadine. And Marius. All right. Um, this is where we, uh, this is where we make a decision, um, as a, uh, as a group, um, oh. to, to better decide, to better describe this creature. It is huge. Um, the equivalent of a huge creature, Seamus, as you see much more of its bulk begin slithering out behind you and it resembles something uh, that was quadrupedal at some point, but it appears that it has extra legs. Um, it has what looks to be... It, you don't see any eyes, but you do see a giant gaping hole where you think a mouth should be. 
and it is the size of a grown man as it splits open in a lamprey like mouth with serrated teeth almost like a flower opening up and each each petal is just lined with these like needle looking like teeth and there are sucker tentacles coming out of its inside of its gullet that are flashing that are fishing everywhere around it currently and it looks like there are writhing masses across most of its flesh. Um, and it is as big as the basilisk that you fought in the, <laughs> in the down in the underway. Um, it's just extremely long. And it is taking up most of the tunnel. And it's kind of, its bulk is bashed up onto the other catwalk, leaving your catwalk currently um unhindered but you need to make a choice and i will let all of you make this choice are we fighting said creature or are we going to be uh running away from said creature because this determines if this is a combat scenario or if this is a skill check sc scenario uh seamus would size up monsters pretty well and he would run Okay. Are we in agreement that we are skill challenging it up or are we going to fight? But Daniel, quick. Let's try to make it to the end. We don't okay. want to fight it on the catwalk. Yes. Uh that that's two. How about Marius? Yeah. Marius would probably probably run too. Okay. Who's a little curious about the fight, you know, but he's ill. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You don't want to fight the abomination in the sewer? It's fine. <laughs> I thought it, I thought about it. <laughs> Not on the catwalk. <laughs> Not on, the, not on the catwalk. It's fine. You know, with with a thunderer and a drinking zon, mm -hmm, you know, maybe mm -hmm. we would find it. True. That's true. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, as this thing thrashes around, um, all of you begin to start moving as quickly as you can in this single file catwalk. Um, Seamus, mm -hmm. I am going to need a check of some kind to progress us further. Um. Uh... I don't do this too often, but I would be since I'm in the back, I would be shouting at everyone in front of me to get moving, especially Nathan, mm -hmm. Daniel. Okay. Um, so I don't know if that would be a leadership one or intimidation. Um, you, the, you pick. Oh, you go. Uh, they're both the same. So. Okay. Uh, well, just we'll yeah we'll, we'll call it intimidation for fun. That seems more right. shameless like. They're both the same amount of points. Um, a 37 out of 55. Okay, 37, 47. Okay, so a, that's one success. One, deg one degree of success for you guys. All right. You need a total of 10 degrees of success, cumulative, to um, okay. escape the abomination. So that's one. Um, if you fall below a certain number of degrees of failure, bad things will happen. So yes, um, you you begin shouting up ahead, telling them to move, and everyone um, begins to move in as quickly as they can. As this thing is still with your bolt lodged in it, which it looks like it didn't do a lot of damage to it. It just kind of pissed it off at this mm -hmm. point, and it's trying to. Um, it's bashing its like the top of its like uh, back and everything up against the ceiling, trying to dislodge the bolt from its back. And that brings us to uh, Bracketing. How would you like to move this along, Bracketing? All right. Um, am I still blinded? You still have one still blinded, blinded condition. condition, yes. Okay. How would I try and shake that off without using a resolve point? Um, in your current predicament? Can I do an endurance check to try and... Uh, how I would normally, normally I would let you do that, but since we're in a skill challenge, it's not going to count towards your success levels. Do you want to take your okay. turn to try to make that endurance test? No, no, no. Okay, I don't. I want to uh, do an intuition check to see if uh, perhaps there is a a way to escape the situation. Okay, yeah. Uh, go ahead and give me an intuition roll. All right. Ooh, 
13 um, out of da, 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 10, 64, five levels of success. Five, okay. So you guys are already at six levels of success. <laughs> Just so you know. So you only need four more. Um, as Bragadine up ahead, as Seamus tells you to hurry forward, you see to your right um, the trail of blood. Um, and so it looks like some of it's dripping blood now. Um, small dots leads off to the right to a smaller tunnel off from this main path. It looks smaller than the sewage tunnel you're in and it looks um roughly hewn almost like the tunnel you came in as well so hopefully the creature can't follow you at least you hope it can't and you point it out to marius and you've seen it as a, a better alternative than um running straight headlong as fast as you can the group of you take this side passage and as you take it, you're still single file, but you are getting further away from the uh, the main sewage tunnel that you were currently in and leading down deeper into the earth. And that will bring us to Marius Wolf. It is now going to be your turn to aid something for this skill challenge. Uh, so as we're, we're moving down a narrower tunnel now, correct? Yes. Okay. Is it still catwalked? No. Are we still this is this oh, is a, okay. a tunnel off of. A, it, you're actually getting away from the sewer. It looks like you're going further mm. into the earth. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's try. Let's try. Can I do anything with? Just because I don't use it very often, can I do anything with? Uh, uh, does James still have a torch? I remember he lit one. At yes, the he he would he would still have his torch. Question. Yes. Am I still close enough to the stew? Am I? Can I see the stew still? I guess is the question. Um, I we can say that you just took the the turn to get off of the. Uh, to get away from the sewer, but you could be within a short distance of it. You hear the screams Ooh, of the I creature. Like where he's going with this. Um, question: mm -hmm. Can I use my <laughs> trade skill explosive? Yeah, of course. To oh, yeah. take this, take this torch and see if I can make something happen here. Of course, that sounds great to me. <laughs> Please do. Hey, you know we got Michael Bay this up. You know Michael yeah. Bay it up. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Silver to crash yeah. on the ground. Uh, oh man, that's a, uh, a twenty-nine out of fifty-two. Twenty-nine, thirty-nine, forty-nine. Okay, you guys are getting really uh, two, close here. You're getting really close. Two levels success. All right, two levels. So that's you're at eight. You need two more. Um, okay. You you essentially what you do is you wait at the at the lip of the. Uh, of the offshoot and everyone files past you. And as they do, you snag the torch from Seamus as he's running past. He doesn't give any resistance. And as you duck back, you toss the well, torch. I still, have my, I still have the torch. That oh, that's right. You had the torch. For, that's right. <clears throat> yeah. As they all pass through you, you look back and you see the creature lunging at this point. Now it is in pursuit of you, thrashing around. And as it's hitting the walls, they're beginning to vibrate and rocks are coming loose. And um, it looks like the little bit of masonry that was holding together some of this tunnel is, is crumbling and starting to collapse. And you toss can, can, the... Can I say something before of it course. gets the gas? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Smile, you son of a bitch. And then... Uh... <laughs> yes. And as you do, its mouth splays open, revealing the serrated rows of teeth, and one of the tentacles is lunging down towards you as the torch hits the gas, and it ignites. <laughs> Boom! There's an explosion that pushes you into the tunnel. You don't take any damage from it, thankfully. Um, but you do feel the heat, and you hear the creature screaming in rage. 
Um, that is the end of your turn. However, the next... Very John McClane, bro. Very John McClane right there. The next turn is Seamus, and this is going to be a very, very um, interesting um, turn of event, Seamus. As the creature, you hear the scream, and you see Marius kind of thrown flat. And you see a tentacly um, slithering limb, almost as if it doesn't have any bones in it. Snake through the uh, through the smoke that's billowing into the top of the tunnel and it looks like it's reaching towards Marius Wolf as he is uh, laying prone in the middle of the tunnel currently. <laughs> so Seamus, what would you like to do? Um, can I use athletics or strength to try to drag this man? You can. Alright. Um, does it matter either one? Nope. You just tell me what you're doing. If you're, if you're using strength, right. it's going to be different than athletics. So, uh, we'll do athletics. Okay. Somehow, some way. Um, a forty-six out of fifty-seven. One degree of success. So you guys are almost there. You manage to dart forward, Seamus, and grab a hold of Marius, and you basically, instead of dragging him. You get him up to his feet, and you both kind of stumble away within inches of this thing lashing above you, and it scrapes against the sides of the tunnel. And that is going to bring us to Bragadine's turn. You might have the deciding role here, Bragadine, as okay, so... this thing is still whipping above their heads, but Marius is in not in immediate danger. What would you like to do, Bragadine? Standing tall with his whole five, five foot three. Mm -hmm. Bragadine pitches his voice low. Marius, Seamus, get your asses over here right now. Leadership role? Sure. Why not? We're going to do a fortune point. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I got good leadership, but that was a bad roll. Mm. Well, well, well. There's a 22. Um, let me see how many successes with that crit there. Um, bum, bum, bum. That's 22 under 71. Okay. So four levels of success. Yeah. Critical. Yeah. Um, you only needed one more, so <laughs> it's fine. As you as you, you call out, um, it snaps more it more so affects um your man at arms with you, Nathaniel, as he kind of shakes off his stupor that he's been in this whole time. I know. And he brandishes his halberd and as the tentacles reaching, and it looks like it's going to wrap around both Seamus and Marius and drag them back, he lashes forward and severs the the tentacle from reaching them as it 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 flops down to the ground, and you hear the thing screaming um, in the back of the tunnel, and then you see the dismembered tentacle begin to move around and fidget as if it's trying to still attack the rest of you and uh, Nathaniel goes crazy for a moment hacking this thing to pieces um, until it stops moving and that's where we're going to take our first break 